Hello, my name is Magnus Peterson. This is my seventh tutorial on TensorFlow, and this is about the so-called inception model, which is a pre-trained deep neural network for image classification. The inception version three model takes several weeks to train on a very large computer with eight very large GPUs, and it probably cost $30,000. So it is impossible to train it on an ordinary PC. What we will do instead is to download it from the internet. It is 85 megabytes, and then we will use it to classify images. The Inception version 3 model has nearly 25 million parameters and uses 5 billion multiply add floating point operations for classifying a single image. On a modern PC, without a GPU, this can be done in a fraction of a second for each image. This tutorial has two parts. The first one, we will go through this Python notebook and show you how to use the inception model. And in the last part of this video, we will go through the source code. This is a flowchart of the inception version three model. And we have the input on the left side here and we have the output on the right side. And you will notice that there are two outputs. These red nodes here are softmax classifiers. There's one here and one here. And this one is used during the training of the network. And this one is used during testing or inference when we want to classify a single image as we're doing in this notebook here. There is a link to the research paper here, which you can read and it gives much more details on how the model is constructed and why it is designed that way. And the paper admits that they don't really know why the inception model works. They have some speculation and guesses why, but as end users, we really don't care because all we want is a pre-trained model that we can download and use and it performs well. And I can tell you that just last week, several new models were released that were far larger than this and which performed somewhat better or slightly better, I would say, on classification accuracy on a common test set called ImageNet. So as usual, we have some imports. And what I have done is that all the code for the inception model has been placed in this module called inception.py. And in the later part of this video, I will go through that file as well. So the first thing we have to do is to download the inception model and you can change the data directory where we download it to here. And this is the default directory. And then we just call this function called maybe download and it will download all the data for the inception model if we don't have it already. In my case, I already have it. So the function just says that we already have it. And then we load the inception model and it's just one line of code. And what you can see here is a deprecation warning so that in the future you might have to download a different file and change the inception.py file to do that. And this is something about TensorFlow because it is developing so rapidly that these tutorials might not be completely accurate six or 12 months into the future. But that's the price you pay for being on the bleeding edge of development. So here I have made a small helper function for classifying and plotting the images. And first it plots the image in the notebook. And then we use the inception model that we have just loaded to classify the image. And what we give it is we give it a file path for a JPEG image and it must be JPEG. And what we get out is an array of the predicted class labels for the image. And then we can use these to print the classification scores for the top 10 classes. This image of a panda comes with the inception data file. And if we call the helper function that we just created, it shows the image of the panda and then it gives us the scores of the top 10 classes. So the inception model outputs thousand scores for all the different classes and they must sum to 100% or 1.00 and they indicate the inception model's relative ranking of what it believes this image shows. So with 89.23%, the inception model thinks that this image shows a panda, a giant panda to be precise. And the next best class is 0.86% that the image might show something called an Indri, which is another exotic animal. And it has a total of 999 of these classes where the score is less than 1%. So these should be regarded as noise. The inception model thinks that this shows a giant panda. Sometimes these scores are called probabilities, but they are not really probabilities. They are normalized numbers or ranks or scores that indicate relative to each other how the inception model or any classification model thinks that the image is classified. And we will see examples below where the inception model is very confused about what the image shows. So here we have an example of a parrot, also called a Macau. 
and this is a larger image as you can see. And when we input this to the inception model, it gives a score of 97.30% that this is indeed a Macau. And once again, all the remaining classification scores are very low. So the inception model is very certain that this is a Macau. However, you should note that the inception model actually only works on images that are 299 by 299 pixels. And the image that we had above of the parrot was actually much larger than that. And it was also not rectangular. So the inception model automatically resizes the input image. So it becomes 299 by 299 pixels. And if the image is not rectangular, it gets squeezed like this. Another thing you note is that the image becomes pixelated and grainy. So these distortions might actually make it more difficult for the inception model to correctly classify what the image shows. And what this means is that when you use the inception model, you might want to rescale the image yourself before you feed it to the inception model. So let's see a few examples of that. One thing we can do is we can simply crop the image. So here we have taken the top part of the parrot image and we see that the inception model gets a very high score that this is the Macau parrot again. So this works well for this image. And we can also crop the image in the middle. So we just have a part of the body and a part of the tail feathers and the feet of the parrot. And once again, the inception model thinks with very high score, a very high likelihood that this is indeed a Macau. So that is quite impressive. Now let us try and crop the image at the bottom instead. So now we just have a piece of the background, which are some fuzzy plants, and then we have the tail feathers of the parrot. Now the inception model gets very confused. And it says with a score of 26.11% that this is a jacama, which is another exotic bird, or with a score of 10.61% that this is a grasshopper. And then it gives a lot of other guesses. And there's an amusing one here that with a score of 2.00%, the inception model thinks that the image might show a fountain pen. And the way to interpret this is that, and the way to interpret this is that the inception model is very confused about what the image shows. And it doesn't actually have a good guess at all. And this score down here with the fountain pen, this is so low that it really should be considered noise. One thing you can do instead is that you can pad the image. So what you would do is that first you pad the image with white space like this. You can see the image is actually now a square. And then you resize it to 299 by 299 pixels. And if we use this padded image as input to the inception model, then it once again gets a very high score that this is a Macau. So in my opinion, this is probably the best way to feed input images to the inception model. You pad it with white space and you resize it so that it is 299 by 299 pixels. I don't know why they haven't done this in the inception code. They really should have. Okay, so now let's try a picture of Elon Musk. And he is, of course, one of the superheroes of the nerd universe. And if we use this image as input to the inception model, then it says that it thinks with a score of 19.73% that the image shows a sweatshirt. And the next best class is a score of 16.82% that it thinks the image shows an abaya, which is a kind of dress for Muslim women, I think. I guess you could say that those are kind of in the ballpark of what the image shows. A human would probably have said that this image shows a man, but at least the inception model recognizes that there's clothes in the image, some kind of clothes. It might also be a suit or a trench coat. And I think what has happened here is that the inception model was maybe trained on data that didn't have so many examples of people or persons. You know, if a person was wearing a sweatshirt, then instead of labeling that image as a person in the data set, it might have been labeled a sweatshirt. And this is why it classifies the image as a sweatshirt instead of a man or a person. Also look at this classification here, where the inception model thinks that the image might show a ping pong ball, or this one where it says it might show a baseball. And perhaps it is this white area, which is the face here but the scores are so low, so I would regard those as sort of noise. I don't think that the inception model is that useful out of the box because in an image like this, you really expect it to say this is a man or a person, not that it's maybe a sweatshirt or maybe an abaya. So let's make an experiment where we take the same Elon Musk picture and we rescale it to 100 by 100 pixels, and then we input it again. And once again, we have that the best class 
that the Inception model thinks it is, is a sweatshirt again, and it's almost the same percentage. But the second best class is now a cowboy boot. And the third best is a balance beam, which is used by athletes. And I don't know if it's maybe the lines that it sees here that it th says that, oh, maybe this is a balance beam. But again, it's quite useless. And if you do the crop differently, this class down here, which is a loafer, actually pops up on the top. And a loafer is a lazy person in English. And I don't think that you could call Elon Musk a lazy person. So it's a, it's a useless class. And it should say this is a man or this is a person. What you have to note again is that the Inception model actually uses pictures that are 299 by 299 pixels. So the image that we had above, which was 100 by 100 pixels, gets rescaled automatically by the Inception model. And it becomes this pixelated and grainy image. But a human can easily see that this is a man or a person. So let's try with another image. And this is the actor Gene Wilder. And I think he passed away recently. And he did a lot of com comedies. And one of them was Willy Wonka. And what the Inception model sees here is that it sees a bow tie with a score of 97.22%. So the Inception model is very certain that this image shows a bow tie. And the remaining classes have very low scores below 1% and they quickly drop to almost zero. And once again, I think that what has happened here is that the Inception model was trained on data where every image where a person was wearing a bow tie, that image was classified as a bow tie in the data set rather than as a person. So actually what we could do is we might just rename this class to person wearing a bow tie. Maybe that would be a lot better. But I think out of the box that the Inception model really should say this is a person. And let's try with an image of Johnny Depp who portrays Willy Wonka in a more recent picture. And now the Inception model thinks that the image shows sunglasses with a score of 31.48%. And the second best class is sunglass with 18.77%. And these are actually short names for the real class names. And the full name of the first class is actually sunglasses, dark glasses or shades. So we can say that these two classes are probably more or less the same. And the Inception model gives a score to about 50% that the image shows sunglasses. But once again, I think the Inception model should say that the picture shows a man or maybe a man with sunglasses or a person with sunglasses. I think out of the box, it is not very useful that it says this sunglasses, sunglasses, well wet wig, cowboy hat. This is a person first and foremost. So the conclusion is that we can download the Inception V3 model from the internet and it would take us several weeks to train this model on a very large and very expensive computer. But if we just download it, we can use it out of the box, no problem. Unfortunately, it appears to have problems recognizing people. And this may be because of the training set that was used. And there are newer versions of the Inception model, but I think they are trained on the same data set. So I think they have the same problems. And I'm hoping that Google or the TensorFlow development team will release Inception models or other image recognition models that are better trained out of the box so that you get results that you would expect. Like the pictures we saw above, those should be people, or they should say it's people with glasses, or it's people with a bow tie, or whatever. As it is now, I'm not sure it is that useful for real applications. I have also given a few suggestions for exercises. There's not so many this time. And you can download this Python notebook and the other source code by clicking on the link below the video. Now let's look at how the Inception model is actually implemented. So here I have switched to the PyCharm editor for Python source code. And here we have the inception.py file. So first we have the usual imports and we are using NumPy and TensorFlow. And then we're using a file for downloading the data set, which is also a part of these tutorials. And you can see it here. I won't describe that here, but you can look at the source code, which has been very well documented. And here we have various definitions of data directories and, and path names. So first we have the URL for the inception model on the internet. And this is a tarball, which we will download and unpack below. And this might change in the future. So you might have to change this address here. And hopefully everything else will work, but it's not guaranteed. Again, this is a price you pay for being on the bleeding edge of development. Here we have the directory where we want to save the files that we are downloading and unpacking. And here we have three file names for the data that we have downloaded and unpacked and which we will load below. 
Here we have some names for tensors in the computational graph. And perhaps you can remember from the previous tutorials that the tensor flow graph has nodes and tensors and all that, and these have names. And in order to feed the input images to the graph, we need to know the correct names of the tensors to do that. And this one is called decode JPEG slash contents colon zero. And this is weird cryptic names and you just have to know what it is. So this is something that is in the documents for the inception model that we are downloading. And they say, this is the name of the tensor where you have to feed the JPEG images. And we also want to print the images that are being resized by the inception model. And I had to look at the graph definition to find out that this is the output of the resize operation. And finally, we have the name of the tensor for the softmax classifier, which is the output of the inception model. So here we have a function for maybe downloading and extracting the files from the internet. And it basically just wraps a function in the download module with the correct URL and the directory. So here we have a class specific for the inception model. So this class is used for mapping between the class number as an integer, which we call CLS, or the class number or the class ID, which is a string. And it can look like this, N0001722. And the name of the class, which could be plant flora plant life, which is the class name for the UID here. And there are actually 1008 output classes of the inception model, but there are only 1000 name classes in these mapping files. So we ignore eight of the output classes of the model. We are using dictionaries for this mapping because it's very easy to program. And on average, the time usage for a lookup is constant. And in the worst case, it is linear. And first we read the mappings from the UID strings to the class names. And we basically just go through the files and pass them in a simple way and then add the data to the dictionaries. Here we go through the file which maps from the UID string to the class number as an integer. And this is slightly different in the format that it's stored in the file. But once again, we just do some simple passing of the file here and we add the data to the dictionaries that we have from above. And then the class provides some functions for accessing these mappings. And you might say that in this case, the function is maybe not necessary because it's pretty much the same as going into the dictionary directly. But when we want to map from the UID to the class name, we have some extra functionality. And similarly, when we want to map from the class number as an integer to the class name. So here we have the inception model. And when we initialize the new object, the first thing we do is that we create a name lookup, which is the class that we had above for looking up the name from the class integer. And now we want to load the TensorFlow graph that we have downloaded from the internet. So first we have to create a new graph and then we create this with block and say that we want to use this new graph as the default TensorFlow graph. So everything we do inside this with block is being done to the default graph that we have just created. TensorFlow graphs are saved to the disk as so-called protocol buffers or protobuffs, which is a file format invented by Google that works on multiple platforms. And in this case, it is saved as a binary file, so it is much smaller than if it was saved as a text file. So what we want to do is open the graphdev file, which we have downloaded from the internet, and we use a TensorFlow function for opening the file. And first, we need to create an empty graphdev object. And then we have to load the protobuf file into this graphdev object. And we do that with this function here, pass from string, file read. And finally, we have to import the graphdev to the default TensorFlow graph, which is a new graph that we created up here. And now this graph holds the inception model from the protobuf file that we have downloaded from the internet. In my opinion, this is a mess. This is something that you can only do if you copy source code from somebody else. It really should be reduced to just one line of code. And it is something that I hope the TensorFlow developers will do in the future. Now that we have loaded the TensorFlow graph for the inception model, we want to extract the parts of the graph that we want to use. So we call this function get tensor by name, and we use a name that we defined above so that we get the classification output from the softmax module of the inception model. And we make a reference to this called y underscore pret, which is similar to what we did in the previous tutorials. 
We also want to have the tensor for the resized image, so we do it in a similar way. We get the tensor by name and use the appropriate name that we defined above. Finally, we create a TensorFlow session so we can e execute the graph. When you are done using the inception model, you have to call this function so it releases the resources of the TensorFlow session. You may remember from the previous tutorials that in order to execute the TensorFlow session, we need to feed the input images in a what is called a feed dict. And we have a little helper function for doing that here. So we take the path name for an image and it must be a JPEG file. And then we read the data for the image here. And this is an array of bytes, which is the contents of the JPEG file. And then we create the feed dict here and return it. And now we get to the function for actually doing the classification. So we give it an image path and then we create the feed dict using the helper function that we had above. And then we run the TensorFlow session and we want the output of the softmax classifier, which we had referenced in this tensor here called y underscore pred. And we give it the feed dict that we have just created. And what we get out is the predicted class labels for the image. And here we just reduce the array so it is a single dimension. Here we have a function for getting a resized image. So what we have is, for example, we are inputting the parrot image, the large one, and we give the function the file name for that JPEG image. And then we create the feed dict. And then we run the TensorFlow session again. But now we want the resized image out. And because the output is a four-dimensional tensor, we just remove the first axis. And then we normalize the pixels so they are between 0 and 1. And then we return the image. And here we have the function for printing the classification scores. And it takes as input the predicted class labels. And it takes a number k of how many do we want to print and whether we only want to print the first name of the classes. And we start by creating an index into the predicted class labels. Remember, this is an array. And what we have here is a sorted index into that array. And the index is sorted lowest to highest. So we take the last k and then we iterate them in the reverse order. So here we look up the class name for that class number and we look up the score and then we print it. And at the bottom of this file, we have a small program. And this is quite similar to what we did in the Python notebook, except we are not plotting anything. But we can try and run it. And we give it the panda image as input. And the inception model thinks that with a score of 89.23%, that this is a giant panda. But you can also just debug the file. We can set a breakpoint here. And debug. And it takes a little while. It's a lot slower when it's debugging. And then we can step over the individual lines in the code. Or we can step into the functions like this. So now we are up in the classify function. And here we have created the feed dict. And now we are calculating the predicted class labels. It takes a while because it's in debug mode. And here we get the output, which is an array. And then we can resume the program and look at the console output. And you can download this source code by following the link below the video.